We decided we wanted to convert to be the Cameron Academy um, just really because of the flexibilities that it could afford us for the short term and long term future for the development of the school, ultimately for the benefit of the students. We had been a grant maintained school and then we moved to foundation status uh, and it seemed like a, a logical move for us to move back to gain a little bit more independence. Well the school's got a history of self-governance, previously we've been a grant, grant maintained school and uh, governance and uh, senior management here has been historically very strong and so we were confident that we could break away from the local authority and still maintain uh, the services that they provided to the students at the school. On top of that we uh, also realised that some of the additional funding and also some of the additional freedoms meant that we could tailor make uh, the, the provision here at the school uh, for what best suits our students. So when we took all those factors into account uh, the conversion to an academy was by far uh, the best deal for our students and staff here compared to con con uh, continuing as a maintained school. We were very well supported both by the DfE and by uh, our legal advisors uh, and uh, I think that it was the planning of the consultation process and ensuring that that ran effectively uh, was crucial. Um, as part of the process to make sure that all stakeholders were on board. Well, uh, this is my second headship and my first headship was for a, a, an old style academy and uh, that, that process were, was pretty arduous. However, when you convert under the new system, the process is much more streamlined. A lot of the uh, articles are off the shelf, so the funding agreement, articles of association and so on are off the shelf, although they can be made bespoke if you have particular issues uh, that are unique to your school. And uh, uh, you also get a, uh, a grant of £25,000 to appoint solicitors uh, who do the vast majority of the donkey work. Um, they've got expertise now in all areas of academy conversion and they do take the strain. It's important to discuss with your uh, local community exactly what is involved and invite them to participate in case there are any issues or concerns. We had uh, a parents meeting and we uh, invited parents and local businesses into that meeting uh, and we did a presentation. Um, we also um, used some of our school council members who were very positive about the academy changes and the advantages that would bring to the school uh, and we felt that that uh, really reassured parents that it was actually for the benefit of the students as well as for the school. And I think there's a lot more openness could be given about what it entails as for what you have to get in place before you consider converting. But then once you've converted it's a case of really have your long-term five, ten year plan in the back of your head before you start making your decisions because it can have massive positive impacts on the school but only if well thought out. <laughs> We've only been in Academy since the uh, 1st of July and we're sort of mid-January now so the, the, a lot of the changes that we've introduced have yet to have uh, an impact upon the students here. But we've um, increased the number of staff available to students at Key Stage 4, especially in English and Maths. So any student who is below their target now will get uh, a one-to-one -one tutor. Uh, historically that's only been for Key Stage 3 students. So all students below their target now at Key Stage 4 gets one-to-one -one in English, Maths and Science. The Academy gives us the opportunity to look carefully at our curriculum to ensure it's the most appropriate for our students to ensure that they are as successful as they can be. Uh, we've been able to um, appoint our own attendance officer so that will improve for the children. We've been able to look at our pastoral structures and have our own school counselling service and other external agencies that we used to buy in. We could now choose to actually have them on our own school site so there's more media access for our students, parents and carers. We have also additional freedoms over the appointment uh, of staff and although we've decided to retain our paying conditions document, uh, the, the, the teachers paying conditions document, uh, we have uh, reserved the right to change that. So for example if we're finding it difficult to recruit staff in maths or science, which historically we have, we could if we wanted to uh, give additional uh, payments to staff to, to recruit them. Within our community we're part of a, a trust with the primary schools and the other secondary schools in our town and our mission really is to provide good quality education for our town uh, and we've enabled to become a partner of that trust and therefore give benefit back to our local community because we're an academy.
when it comes to the students, that they won't notice a great deal of difference in the classroom immediately. Certainly the day we converted to an academy, it felt, looked, smelt and uh, seemed exactly the same as it was the previous day when we were a maintained school. What academy status does do is give senior leaders and governors an opportunity to tailor the provision for the students and what best fits them as opposed to being dictated to by the local authority and we as people in situ within the school know what's best for, for our institution and that's what academy status has given us is the freedom to do what's best and to do it relatively rapidly compared to being a maintained school.